to start now. I want to remind everyone that we are going to stick to a tight time frame. And so the meeting will end at 7.30, if not sooner. Um, there will be no objections to us ending sooner. One of the stipulations I wanted to put out at, this, at the outset is that generally when we have meetings like this, we usually do it in reverse, reverse where we you know, have the meetings amongst board members, and then we try to accommodate the community. Because this work has already been done at the committee, and there will be other opportunities for the board to have a say, tonight's meeting will be led by the community. So just so you know, if, you, if you're a board member and you raise your hand and I don't call on you, not being rude, I'm just not going to call on you. This is really about the community. This is the purpose of the meeting so that the community can understand how, as a community board, we've advocated through for certain prioritizations through our process of the community needs um, process. And then this way it serves as more of an information session as it's been described, and which is really what it is and less of a chance for us to have another meeting. The work has already been done at the committee again, and there'll be other opportunities for us to discuss this, but this is a chance to let people um, be educated on the process. So before I kick off that process, let me just pause and see does anybody have any questions? Okay, great. The second thing I wanna make everyone aware of is as we go through the responses tonight, two, a few things you'll notice. Um, we grouped the items that in, in the board rank based on the agencies. And then additionally, you'll see under the agency response, items of cover coding. For the sake of the meeting this evening, I want to make everyone aware before Ted puts those items up on the board for, for people to view, there is a, a certain level of color coding. So let's go through the kind of the easier ones. Any of the items that you see in green have been approved. They've been approved. I'm not going to entertain any discussion about them. They've been approved. That's what we wanted. That was the goal. So that's mission accomplished. Any items that are in red have been rejected. I'm not going to discuss those items either because generally the items that are in red have been rejected due to financial constraints. And whatever those budgetary or financial constraints are, it is more advantageous for board members and community members to advocate for those items directly with the council members. So we're not gonna take that up. It's a nice meeting as well. That leaves us with um, what look, may look like blue for some, Purple for others. Those are the items that require a little bit more dialogue. And then there's some items that are, may look like tan, may look like orange, or something a little lighter, depending on how you view this on your screen or if you printed it out. And those are the items that will lend to discussion. Again, for those who may just be joining, that I'm looking for the discussion from the community, not the board members. The board will have several opportunities to discuss this on top of what we, what has already been discussed at the board level I mean, and the committee level. So I really want this to be about the community. And this is really more of a special public meeting, more of an information session. This doesn't require a vote, doesn't require us to do any type of formal action, but it may, helps us meet the requirements of what the community district needs statement is about because these items usually come to us from the community. It's a chance for us to give an update to the community. So with that, Taya, are you ready? Yes. All right, perfect. You wanna share your screen and we'll go through these items that are listed here. Okay, great. So again, what you'll see here is the ranking of the items and the items have been grouped out by the agency. So if we go from the, from top, the top um, column, a row, top row, sorry about that. And going from left to right, you'll see the ranking of the item, the agency, the budget request for fiscal year 24, the response, and then tonight, which could be the start of it, but again, 
through subsequent conversations that we'll have with the board, here is where we'll start to populate what the action is and how we are gonna follow up to any feedback that we receive this evening. So the first item, the first agency we're dealing with is the Brooklyn Public Library. Um, and in Brooklyn Public Library, of the items that have been ranked for the by the community board, uh, we have um, the highest ranked item would be item number 11. That, that's, so we we'll start from the bottom. That's item number 11. That will be capital funding for the Clinton Hill Library renovation. Now, for those of you who may not be aware or remember, um, at one point we did advocate and it was successfully done that the Clinton Hill Library got an HVAC renovation. It had no air conditioning. That was successfully um, done. So this is additional support. And this item as presented as part of the district needs statement, was that the library and staff, or we consider them neighborhood gyms, um, we're asking that they get the resources they need to grow. An update, which is a clearly aging facility. If anybody's been to that branch, you know that it's an aging facility. And we ask that they would be on par with other libraries within our district. The response from the library, as you can see, says the agency agrees with the request, which is a good start, and recommends funding for this expense budget in fiscal year 2024. But at this time, there's a lot of uncertainty about where the availability, availability of the funds are coming from. So again, this is one of these things where, while they didn't say no, clearly the statements indicate that they believe in the request and recognize the need for it. This is where additional advocacy on our part and the community part can help address this item. So let me go through all of the items for the agency first, and then I'll open it up for questions. The next um, highest ranked item under capital would be capital funding for additional Walt Whitman renovations and outfitting. Again, similar to the Clinton Hill uh, request, while we celebrate the funding quiet to date, we request full provisioning for this facility due to its location's historic importance, proximity, and important, importance to the Walt Whitman NYCHA community and its central location within our district. The agency agrees with the request and will accommodate in part. Partial funding for this request already exists, which is a great thing. The Brooklyn Public Library requests new funding for the additional components. And we'll, we need to contact the, the library for additional information, which again is an ongoing process. We'll follow up there. The next item for rank and really the third item for the library is extend the library hour items. A request has been made that we need the libraries to be open as much as possible, particularly with as our youth grapple with post-COVID recovery and ongoing social uncertainties. Brooklyn Public Library agrees with the request. However, city-funded financial support is necessary to undertake this project, and funding cannot be uh, determined at this time. So those are the three items that have been put forth by the community board for the Brooklyn Public Library. Those are their respective responses. Are there any questions from the community? Okay, next. The next category I see is the Department of Cultural Affairs. The one item there is um, funding to support, funding and support for turning 227 Duffield into an abolitionist museum. This is the sole remaining site of the downtown Brooklyn address known to be associated with the Underground Railroad and the abolitionist movement. This is an important space of our local and national heritage that must be preserved, celebrated, and leveraged uh, to teach future generations. The agency's response is, the agency requires additional information from the community and community board regarding this request. Each request must be tied to one organization and mention a specific pro project. I think the board and the office has already done so. That's something that we can provide additional information for, but clearly we've taken the right steps to have it um, identified as a request through this process. Any questions on this item for the Department of Cultural Affairs? Okay, great. 
Next item, uh, EDC, Economic Development Corporation. There are two items for that agency. One is to uh, improve the access to the ferry service. Ferry service is the fastest and most pleasant way to travel around the city, particularly in the current environment of public safety concerns. The community would like more ferry access points. and more ways to directly access the ferries from the landlocked portions of the district. Please consider dedicated, okay, fine. Um, the response from the city is further study by the agency of this request is needed. So that's one of those items that um, clearly receives an acknowledgement. I'm not sure what the intricacies of what the further study would be, but clearly there's an opportunity us, for us to follow up with EDC um, and, and the elected officials, particularly the council, to make sure that that request is fully satisfied. The next item for EDC is funding to for a capacity study of city-owned properties in the district and a master plan to construct as many affordable housing units as possible. Um, there's really no need to go through kind of the language there. That, that's clear. We want more affordable housing units in the district. Um, there, you know, I can just paraphrase and pick out certain pieces. So according to a uh, database, there are 29 city-owned properties up for deposition in CB2, existing residential structures, vacant land areas, um, parcels, properties, leads to private tenants. Young adults can no longer afford to live in the community. This is an uh, issue we all know far too well. Again, the response from EDC, mirrors that of the item below. Further study for the agency of this request is needed. Again, I'm not sure the particulars of what that further study looks like, but it's an item for us to keep holding the agency accountable for and see how we get a resolution in a positive way that meets the items that are listed here in the request. Any questions from the community? Yes, Councilor yeah, Singletary, this is John Dew. Hey, John. Uh, good evening, Community Board 2. Um, I was going to bring up affordable housing separate, uh, but I'm glad it's included in the report. Community Board 2 needs to be reminded if they're not aware of the fact that downtown Brooklyn was upzoned in 2003. Back then, it was a low-income community of color. Today, it is not that. The land has been upzoned to the extent that that low-income community of color can no longer afford and have effectively been forced out of downtown Brooklyn. So we talk about affordable housing sort of in a casual level when the city's policy is responsible for the largest homeless population ever documented in the city of New York. So my request is, is it possible to have EDC come to Community Board to Landmark and Land Use Committee to address specific issues and to give a lot more specificity to how the existing city land can be converted to affordable housing. Sure, I think there's no reason why we can't extend the invitation to representatives from city um, EDC to have them present, maybe answer specific questions as you raised. Not a problem. Thank you. Sure, any other additional questions from members of the community? Okay, great. Uh, Taya? Next page, I see, oh wait, okay, so item number three in priority would be um, PS46, it needs a flake facelift. You know, we, we've always been, uh, Community Board 2 has always been the supporters of things that are gonna help better education in our youth. I think clearly this is an item that the agency agrees is the right thing to do, so as an example, this is an item where I say anything in green, there's no need to discuss because it's already been approved. So 
this is an example of where I'm not going to spend time supporting this or discussing this. Same thing holds true with the next item. Um, the item listed below, can you scroll, up, scroll down a little bit more, Tina? Okay. okay, so the items listed below, as I see, item 30. So we have funds the proposed PS20 infrastructure plans, including adding an elevator and building an outdoor learning space on the roof for a school-led sustainable farm. The agency agrees with this request, but the funding, but the request, but this request includes more than one proposal. Funding for part is recommended. So again, on these items, we need to follow up so that it's not a generic response, but we get a more specific answer related to the request at this time. The next item I see going up is um, E6, a full-time nurse assigned to every public school. Our youth need the services of full-time school nurses to provide critical health care and education and to support their mental wellness as they continue to navigate the unprecedented circumstances of COVID. Our district suffers from extremely high pediatric asthma rates. Students diagnosed with childhood asthma need support to learn how to manage their asthma effectively. And there's other things that support those that important topic. The response from the city is this request requires further study. Contact the community board unit or OMB for additional, I'm sorry, for information regarding this request. I just want to highlight for a minute. Don't be alarmed. Don't be surprised if you see a repetitive theme of generic responses from the agency. That is common for how this process works. But this heightens why I recommend that we don't stop with just communication through and solely to the community board. This is where the advocacy and the voices make a difference. So we need to continue to go out to the elected officials, continue to push through these type of requests because these requests are meaningful, they add value to the entire community, and we can't just rest, rest solely on the community board. Linda, I see your hand raised. I'll come back to you in a second. I just want to go through all the items with the agency first. The next item I see here is uh, funding for more 3K outreach, full-time workers, and seamless programs offering wraparound services for participants. I think the context really speaks similar to what was listed in item E6. Again, you see the response from the agency, rather consistent. Again, don't be alarmed by the generic way in which they were responded to. The next item is um, funded proposed. I already spoke about that, I'm sorry. Can we scroll down a little bit more, Tan? So these two items here have been rejected. Um, again, like I said at the outset, I'm not gonna really spend a lot of time on items that have been rejected because generally they speak to things that the agency can, I'm sorry, things that the agency won't do or can't afford to do. But in these two instances, I do wanna just highlight, one is a renovation of the schoolyard Funding requests can come at different times in different, different fiscal years. And sometimes the council members can allocate funds. So this might be an avenue where further advocacy and support may address to get this resolved for PS 287. And then uh, the next item is environmentally informed renovation of a shared courtyard at MS 447 in Brooklyn High School for the Arts based on the work of the students who have studied the issue with Pratt and C, CG, nature-based, not sure what the last part of that record rep represents. But again, continued conversation, follow up, let's not take no for an answer. And let's see if it's not covered in fiscal year 24, perhaps it could be covered in fiscal year 25. So with that, let me pause. I did see one hand go up earlier, uh, Linda and I'll call on you now and then call on other members in the community who may have questions. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, I just want to know what is a full-time nurse when we're requesting a full-time nurse? Someone who is a, someone who is a nurse. In the school. Someone who may be a nurse or a practical nurse, someone who's fully trained to be a nurse during the full hours of operation while the school is open. So if it's eight to four or nine to three, it varies. Correct. Whatever the school's hour, whatever the school hours are, oftentimes what you'll find is on average, there is no nurse. There's usually a principal, a guidance counselor, or someone and a first aid kit. 
And in some cases, you'll find maybe a part-time nurse. This request is to ensure that there's a nurse on site at all times. And sometimes they put public health assistance in there, but they don't have the same level uh, that a nurse has. Correct. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions from the community? Chair Singletary, this is John Do again. I just want to acknowledge that there is a severe nursing shortage in the city of New York. Many of our hospitals are lacking adequate nursing uh, uh, support for basic services. So this is something that is going to present a challenge and we have to actually investigate deeper to see that we are going to have an adequate supply of nurses going forward because the schools are competing against the hospitals. So we just have to get a little bit more detail on how the city plans on approaching this for overall. But the schools is just one piece of it. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the community? Okay, great. Uh, the next item, the next agency we're going to go to now is the collective responses from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. So let me start first with the, let me just confirm something. So we'll start with the highest capital priorities. So I'm going to start with C9, more air quality monitoring in downtown Brooklyn, near construction sites and along the BQE. One could one could probably modify that and say, especially along the BQE, but that's not what's there. But essentially, everybody understands the value and the importance of air quality. And to me, I think this is self-explanatory. However, the response from the Department of Mental Hygiene is that this is not a budget request. So perhaps it is incumbent upon the community board to go back and maybe revisit ways that we can make this an actual budget request instead of just highlighting something that's a need. One thing that I would recommend the board to do, which we will do, including the agency, is we figure out how to change the language with this one. So we can come to that later. The next item I wanna highlight is funding for supervised injection. Is that, is that an injection or inspection? It is injection. Okay, injection site in the district. So we recommend allocation of space at the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Clinic at 295 Flatbush, or partnering with a local hospital to close down Brooklyn and major transit. The agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request before making a funding decision. Community board should contact the agency. Again, we need to follow up. Subsequent conversations may bring a little bit more clarity or be able to get uh, a different response from the agency. The next item I see listed here, I'm just thinking about order of priority. So let's go to C25, a little further down. Oh, I'm sorry, Tam, forget it. I'm, I'm looking at the long list. Forget it, forget it. Um, next item here for discussion would be E10. So more primary and specialist staffing and extended, expanded hours of the Four Green Health Clinic. Asthma and related chronic medical conditions in our district remain acute due to lack of affordable, equitable professional health care. While we seek environmental solutions, we must also fight for better access to quality care. The agency agrees with this request. The funding cannot be determined at this time. The agency will try to accommodate this issue within existing resources. So not a bad answer, but to get it better, probably we should continue to follow up or look for ways to be a little bit more specific in what's needed um, for this request. The next item is funding for more child care inspectors. Child care is too expensive and options are limited, particularly for newborns and infants. Good affordable child care is a net positive for everyone. We request increased funding to deploy more qualified inspectors to get new facilities open faster. 
Again, just like the answer before, the agency agrees with requests. More information needs to be determined, blah, blah, blah. And then the last item that I see here um, for discussing is more funding for mosquito spray and accompanying public outreach, education, and notification regarding safety best practices. Um, so again, you know, the three same responses for each of these items, but clearly there's an acknowledgement that these are the right items to put forth. And that we hope that we can get more feedback from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Let me pause, any comments or questions from the community? Thomas, I'm, I'm gonna get your comments when, we, when the board continues to have additional conversation. So at the community level, I mean at the committee level, and then at the board level, we'll do a little bit more. I just want to give the community a chance to respond tonight, if that's okay. Should I ask a quick question? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, how was the language of these requests finalized, and what opportunities did the board or the public have to shape the language of the priorities so that they came across as requests to the agencies? So we have the opportunity as board members post tonight, we'll have additional conversation. We'll have an opportunity to do this at the, at the general board meeting. And then at the committee level, there'll be opportunities to maybe modify and work with here and there. From the community perspective, tonight gives us a chance to hear feedback from the community, which we can take down and then use that as information to be additive to our language. So if you listen, like for example, some of the items that were listed earlier by Mr. Du, we can take those items and we, we, we craft the statement so it has a little bit more meaning and impact so that when it goes back to the agency, we will have been able to, to give it more, um, more strength, if you will, to the responses. Okay. Linda? I was thinking of a way of it being a budget item for the air quality monitoring, if it's an independent monitoring and not that it's done by the Department of Health themselves. Great suggestion. Okay, thank you. John Du? John, are you on mute? John, are you on mute? John, I'm gonna do one more time. Yeah, I see your hand up. Are you on mute or you just put your hand up by accident? Or perhaps you will high five it either Thomas or Linda. All right, let's move on to you. Can you hear me now? Now I can. Yeah, I don't know why that mute button wouldn't release. In any event, I needed just to go back on to the issue with the nurses in the schools and to add that, is it possible that an LPN would be a satisfactory replacement if indeed uh, a registered nurse is not available so that we could open it up a nurse is better than no nurse whatsoever so if we could put that into the mix and ask the schools and all the the other folk if we could create a standard for lpns in the absence of the ability to fill the position with a registered nurse so i think that's a fair point i think what i, what I would recommend is that Maybe we don't get specific. I know that the item here says full-time nurse, but maybe somewhere in parentheses, we could say we, you know, we're open to all level of um, full-time nursing professionals. And that way you can just keep it as open as possible. Because when you start getting into different levels of nursing, I don't know that that level of degree makes a difference in supporting a child uh, with certain challenges during the height of the day. So. Maybe that's a better way to add to that. Thank Taya, you for that. Sure, Taya, I don't, I don't know if you wanna put it there or maybe you wanna put it under board action or takeaway. Then we can come back and revisit that. Is that, is that helpful? So. Sorry, I'm taking notes on a separate talk. Thank you, okay, John. Perfect. perfect. So I see Linda and Jeff, you still, I mean, Linda and John, you still have your hands up. Yes, I have one other sure. 
the Department of Health stopped hiring LPNs back in the 70s. They used public health assistance. So I think we should look at what we what should be done, what medical things and who should handle it and who's licensed to do that. So, and you're right, it shouldn't be specific but what we want done. Yeah, so we'll keep it generic for now and let the city and the state worry about the requirements. But I think it, what we're asking for from a community perspective is to make sure that you know we get all the things that we need to address this one item. Very good. Mr. Ryan, do you have a question? Um, I was just going to piggyback on um, what was already clarified. My understanding was that the, the city of the state was getting rid of getting um, was eliminating the title um, uh, LPN and going with registered nurses um, from, you know, from from a certain time on so that uh, an LPN that title would be completely elim eliminated. That's all. So I, I'm agreeing with what was corrected already. Hello? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Taylor, what's the next agency? Department of Homeless Services. We have two items for the Department of Homeless Service. One for discussion this evening would be uh, five mobile shower unit hygiene vehicles traveling the district weekly. These have become wildly successful. These have become these have become wildly successful permanent programs in other major cities such as San Francisco. This simple offer of a hot shower is a lightweight getaway to accepting other kinds of long-term assistance. The city should invest in outfitting and deploying these units regularly. The response from the agency is further studied by the agency of this request is needed. Again, something that we should probably follow up on. Seems like a reasonable, not too strenuous solution, and I'm sure it can really make an impact as is described in the language of the request. The next item I'm not going to address, people can have the opportunity to read it to leave. Now we're up to New York City Housing Authority. The item here is to improve public housing maintenance and cleanliness. No need for me to read the rest of the request. The agency responses. The agency supports this request. The funding is not available at this time. It cannot be funded in fiscal year 2024. We submit for consideration in fiscal year 2025. If there are specific apartments that are experiencing these issues, please send them directly to InterGov or management to address accordingly. So I know that's the agency's response. I would additionally add that, you know, this is the type of thing where you need to flood 311, right? If things like this are happening, we need to continue to register these things because while you may not get a response from 311 directly, as a reminder, or maybe some form of information, when a report is generated and you see the top items because of a continuous call, that's where the agencies tend to put their focus and address their resources to. So again, um, while that's the agency's response, I think the community board response should be continue to call as many resources as you can to make sure that people recognize that this is a high priority item to get responses in, in return. Um, that's the only item I see for housing. Uh, the next set of pages or items come for uh, really a part of the parks department. So while I was trying to do this in order of requests, I think I'm just gonna start from the top because there's a lot of items here for the, for the parks department. So the first item we have here is renovate Bridge Park 3 next to the Farragut Nitro Complex. Renovate the dilapidated basketball courts, make official the renegade community garden that has sprung up in the unused um, Bashi Court, Bashi, Help me out. Uh, Bachi. Bachi, there we go. Bachi courts. Uh, Reimagine the open space near the handball courts for better community use and repurpose the underused handball courts as a multi use hard court for affiliated sports, including handball, bike polo, pickleball, street soccer, and street hockey. 
This is a creative, adaptive reuse of concrete areas that can be shared by multiple demographics at Farragut and the immediate neighborhoods and has an active friends group advocacy group. The response from the agency is the support the request includes more than one proposal. Funding for part is recommended. The request requires further study. So in addition to the items that highlight further study, let's see if we can't be a little creative in how we break these out a little bit, because if, if we break them out, maybe we can get a more clarity on what can be supported and then what's left out and how we can advocate for whatever is left out, um, as well as the items that are being supported. Any, um, I'm sorry, you know what, I'm sorry, before I, I move forward, I apologize. I didn't get a chance to ask if there were any requests for the housing items. I didn't see any hands go up, but I do want to be consistent in the way the meeting is going. So are there any questions related to um, the one item for the housing authority from the community? Okay, great, thank you. Oh, Mr. Duke. Yes. Uh, is it possible for the housing authority to provide uh, an estimated budget on what it would take to make the essential repairs in the public housing development so we could understand what exactly we're talking about and then talk with the elected representatives about how to go about funding what needs to happen in public housing? Yeah, I actually think that's a reasonable request. I know they, they've given the statistics as highlighted here, but I think to specifically address your question, um, some type of budgetary information, probably a little bit more detail to give us some insight on what kind of numbers we're talking about. I see a question from Andrew. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm interested in that, uh, the Bridge Park 3 one, that's kind of like a proposal I've been working with the community board on a little bit. Um, but uh, so they're saying that their, their, their response is mostly that there's too many things in that one proposal, it should be broken up a little bit. Um, but also I have heard that the parks, a lot of the advice that I had heard is the park, the parks department likes to do a lot of large projects. And if they are small projects, they really don't pay attention. So it seems just like a bit of conflicting advice. And so I just wonder if you have any thoughts about that. Um, so great for highlighting that. Um, what, what we what we found in our experience is that the parks department doesn't necessarily have a budget. Usually they have to have an allocation. So when I look at a request like this, in my mind, the audience is less about the parks department, but the audience is more about the council members. And so we can be more direct in promoting this to the council members. We can work collaboratively to make sure that they are specific in what they're allocating for. So, you know, because the thing I want to guard against is while the response is appreciative, we're glad that the agencies respond, you don't want to come away with nothing. You definitely want something. And if it means that for, for argument's sake, and I'm, I'm not doing a full count, but let's say there are 10 items here. We can get five done in 24, fiscal year 24, and then we can continue to advocate with the council members to get another five in fiscal year 25, then I think we would have accomplished something. It may not all have to go in 24. So that's where I respond to your point, but it's definitely a point well taken. So like break it out with like maybe different budget items for each of those things or something, but exactly. still the same proposal. That's yeah, right. Cool. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And I'm just piggybacking off of that because in one of the other responses from the agencies that said we can't cover it in 24, but we'll cover it again in 25. That's one of those things where we can, you know, try to see if we can spend two fiscal budgets. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Tay, what I'll leave off, I'm on six, I'm on eight, okay, yeah. Replace the crumbling synthetic turf at South Oxford Park. So I, I know that's something that we've brought up in the past. So I'm glad that this is still here. Let's continue to keep this on the list. The response from the agency is the project has not been funded. The agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request. The next item I see is more funding for Underwood Park. Clinton Hill only has, has only Underwood Park and half of the park is inaccessible to the public, locked and abandoned. Good traffic clearly indicates need for access to the space. The agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request. 
if we're making a funding decision, many boards should contact the agency. I'm not gonna respond to that. The next item we see here is our approved visual signage at all playground entrances to enhance safety and hygiene. Absolutely, fully agree with that. The agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request before making a full, before making a funding decision. The community board should contact the agency with sites happy to discuss. So what I would recommend here is, along with these other items, let's have a, since there's a willingness to want to discuss, let's discuss all of these items with the uh, Parks Department and Recreation to get a little more clarity, including the first two items, so including C2, C8, and these items here. Let's have a conversation with the Parks Department, get a little bit more drill down and clarity on why they can't um, maybe have a different response that would indicate um, support as opposed to a request for additional information. The next item I see is a 16. Fort Green Park is overcrowded. Fort Green Park is oversubscribed and becoming increasingly unpleasant and unmanaged. Funding for park safety patrols must match the increase in usage. Agency agrees with this request, but funding cannot be determined at this time. This will require a large expense budget. Again, since there's a willingness to want to have a conversation, let's add uh, this to the list and find out what type of um, detail is needed. And if it's, a, if it's less of a conversation about budget, then maybe we can back our way into what they suggest is the right number of patrol or offices there to provide uh, assist, assistance around safety. The next item is an installation of timed lights and or a dome at Fort Green Tennis Court to expand usage hour. The response from the agency, this would have to be a concession. This request requires further study. Next item I see listed here is fix the, the track. I'm sorry, hold on for me one second. I apologize. Um, fix the detector on the automatic sprinkler at Walt River Park. The motion detector on the, on the off sensor on the sprinkler has been broken for several years. The agency agrees with the request and recommends funding in fiscal year 24, but at this time, the availability of funds is uncertain. Okay, so let me pause there. That, that covers the items from the Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, I'm gonna call on Andrew. Andrew, you said you have a question or your hand was still up from before? Sorry, that's a tired hand. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. Mr. Duke? John, I think you're on mute. I'm going back to the Fort Green Park issue. I am getting reports that we have a reasonable amount of homeless folk that live in the Fort Green public housing or spend a lot of time in Fort Green public housing. So that's something that I guess we need to also begin to track a little bit better. I'm not quite sure how we do it. The information I get is generally from the folks that live in the Fort Green public housing projects. So I have some uh, security that the information is accurate. I'm just not quite sure how you go about tracking and monitoring and collecting that information, much less what you do once you find that it's true. But um, I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. The next agency to report on it is uh, the New York City Police Department. The item I see here for discussion would be funding permanent traffic agents at our major intersections on Atlantic, Flatbush, around the BQE, and near the bridges. So you, you start to see some of this, uh, particularly at peak hours, at the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, not as much on the Manhattan Bridge of late it used to take place when there were turning restrictions to the Brooklyn Bridge. But you know, this request is clearly something that would add to traffic calming within the district. The response from the agency is this request requires further study. Each patrol borough 
enforces traffic laws as needed as a result of traffic conditions and community complaints. Let's follow up with NYPD to see if we can get a little bit more detail and clarity on this. The next item is more traffic cameras, closed circuit television, noise monitors, and other automated enforcement technology at every major intersection. Um, so I think the topic is a little self-explanatory. Response from the agency is the agency agrees with this request, but funding cannot be determined at this time. August cameras are funded via allocations from elected officials for use with, within their districts. Specific location recommendations should be provided to the local precinct commander for submission to the Information Technology Bureau once funding is allocated. The NYPD will attempt to accommodate specific location requests whenever funding is provided, but reserves the right to place cameras as appropriate due to current crime trends and operational needs. Um, we thank the police department for that response. That's helpful. Hopefully we can have an opportunity for more follow-up and be able to get more resolution to those items. The next, I'm sorry, any questions on the item listed from the New York Police Department? Okay, next agency, Taya, I see the Department of Sanitation. More containerized trash and, and re recycling receptacles and pickup service along every big corridor, public schools, parks, and New York, New York City Housing Authority. Submission contains multiple requests, which agency cannot appropriately address with a single response code. This requires further study. This seems doable to me. Uh, I think that just happens to be a generic response. Let's break this out because I don't see anything on this that doesn't seem reasonable and can't be immediately addressed. So that, that's probably a takeaway for, for us to change the language and wording there. More sanitation service and enforcement under the BQE. This is not a budget request, it's a response from the agency. The matter in question is in issues of service delivery and or agency policy. Contact the Department of Sanitation to determine how best to resolve this issue. If we haven't already done so, let's do that. And if it means bringing the Department of Sanitation out to meet with the board, um, perhaps through the district office or to a general body meeting or even to the HES committee, I think this is an appropriate accommodation. So let's take um, Department of Sanitation's to follow up on their invitation to contact them and see what kind of response we get with this. Consider trash, recycling, compost stations that act as ballers to protect pedestrian crossing. I'm not sure about how that's really safe um, because most compost stations are sometimes out of soft plastic, but let's follow through. Maybe there's more to this that I'm aware of. The response from the agency is more information is needed from the community board before making a funding decision. Community board should contact the agency. Agency does not cannot give priority of funding to funding this request. So again, let's follow up with Department of Sanitation to see if there's other mitigants or conversations we can have to address those items. The last item I see for discussion would be daily pickups of compost and universal bin distribution throughout Community District 2. Response from the agency, although the Department of Sanitation supports this program due to fiscal constraints, the availability of funds is uncertain. So I, I would recommend that as we bring out the Department of Sanitation, maybe there's an opportunity for us to get more clarity on this item as well. Any questions from the community on the items for the Department of Sanitation? Richard? Yes, uh, perhaps the uh, best thing would be to, to do some research on how Spain has set it up and see what kind of containers they use. And we can present it to the Department of Sanitation in a real way instead of just saying Spain did this and we don't, you know, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm sure we can get some information that would be very useful. That's actually helpful. I had no idea that Spain had that level of advanced skill set. Given your familiarity with it, can I ask you to work with the board office and help us get some information related to that? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Can I, I said, I wasn't aware Spain had that level of advanced set up. 
given your familiarity with that, but can I ask you to work with the board office to give us additional information? Sure. Thank I'll you. Try. Appreciate it. Any other questions from the community? Okay, next agency day. Okay, the Department of Small Businesses. The item I see is more workforce training offered at NYCHA communities to increase the number of NYCHA residents securing local jobs, and registering for DCAS exams. Sponsor, great, great suggestion, by the way. The sponsor the agency, further study by the agency of this request is needed. I'm not sure what additional studies are required, but I think this is a great item. I, mean, I encourage everyone to follow up individually as well as the support of the board so we can get this underway. I think there's more than enough opportunities for this type of workforce training to exist within NYCHA. And whether it's on site of the NYCHA communities or in close proximity, it would be great. Maybe this is something that can spill over to the Navy Yard, who knows? Is that it for a small business? Any questions from the community on um, small business services? Okay, great. Next um, agency, Tim. I think we have New York City Transit. So there are three items from the Department of Transport, New York, New York City Transit. So the first item is we need elevators or escalators in all subway locations. So that's something I know we've been advocating for a long time. Whether we've been specific in identifying elevators or escalators, I know that we've been consistent in making sure that all stations are ADA compliant and has working operable um, elevators and escalators. So this is an item that is clearly ranked appropriately. The response from the agency is the agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request before making a funding decision. The community board should contact the agency. I think we've already done that for several years, but let's continue with it. Let's not stop con contacting a transit authority. The next item, create more bus only lanes and prioritize electric buses for the district. Some of this I believe is being, being discussed in, in various initiatives taking place within the New York City Transit Authority. I would encourage everyone who has not already been a part of the bus redesign map conversations to make time to, to join those conversations. There's a lot that's being shared, but it gives us a chance to talk about how the initiatives that are taking place at the Department of Transportation are inclusive and not exclusive. And it gives a chance to discuss what impact those projects may have. The response from the agency is the agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request before making a funding decision. The community board should contact the agency. Bus, prior, bus priority is a joint effort between New York City Transit Authority and the New York City Department of Transportation. High street station flooding mitigation. The station is constantly, the station constantly floods during heavy rain and extreme weather events, which are becoming more common. The city is going to face more extreme events in almost all categories and needs to ramp up protections and diligence. The agency requires additional information from the community board regarding this request before making a funding decision. Community board shall contact the agency. Again, let's do that as we've done for all of our other requests. Let me pause to see if there's any questions from the community. I see the hand of John Dew. Yes, uh, Chair Singletary, because we're talking public transportation, this is an item that needs a lot of attention here in community board too again we have increased the population substantially in downtown brooklyn there is more of everything except streets we have not added any streets and we have open streets which are actually closed street so there is no overall traffic program we seem to deal with one issue at a time and we never assess the impacts on the rest of the community. And in regards to ADA, this community board two requested in conjunction with the upzoning of downtown 
that all stations be made ADA compliant. That was back in 2003, and the city agreed. Not one station has been made ADA compliant in the following two decades. Two decades. So that's 20 years of absolutely no, no installation of ADA for what is a legally required implementation. The plan that the MTA put out recently to make more stations ADA compliant is 15 or 20 years in the future. How do we get our elected officials to focus on transportation and ADA compliance in Community District 2? Thank you, John. We'll definitely continue to follow up and promote that. Um, you're right, we've been advocating this for almost, seems like it's going to be a decade, but we continue to push for this. Certain, certain things you just can't give up on, you have to continue to keep fighting. This is clearly one of them because the impact on people coming to the district is having a real impact. Um, and I think some of the things that have been sparing us thus far is that so many people in the district have opted to take the path of, of working remotely. But when people start getting back, if we get to a day when people start getting back to work full time, these platforms and some of the bus routes weren't equipped to deal with the influx of residents coming into downtown Brooklyn. The next agency I see is the Department of Transportation. So there's so many items here that you can't see the agency name. We'll just take it from the top. Lapis Avenue needs to be redesigned. The board requests better signage, lane markings, and haptic enhancements, haptic enhancements to differentiate the pedestrian, bike, cycle, and vehicular lanes of this major borough thoroughfare, supporting safe multimodal transit. Sorry, Lenny, one second. Mm. Okay, here we go, I lost my spot, okay, yeah. Safe and multimodal transit has positive impacts on congestion, the environment, and community health. But many residents are still afraid to leave their private vehicles because of the streets are not being designed for multimodal safety. So clearly, this is another example of an agency agreeing with the request. This is in green, this is what we want. We wanna hopefully get to a point where the whole page gets green. And maybe we take another body to Apple for the other items, but this is a, a instance where the agency agrees. Same thing holds true with bike like, racks. Let me scroll down to item priority board rank C6. Outfit every bus stop with a shelter and a countdown clock. This is something we've been advocating for some time now. And so this is good to see that it's still on the items of needs on one hand. A little disappointing that we haven't found a solid resolution for this, but here's the agency's response. This request includes more than one proposal. Agency agrees with this request and will accommodate in part. DOT is currently working on a contract that would assault up to 1,500 additional bus time poles citywide and will prioritize locations based on factors including ridership and equity. DOT is fully funded for this work and no longer soliciting funds. We have reached the maximum number of bus shelter installations allowed under the current contract. However, in 2023, we will have the capacity and ability to install benches and or leaning bars to provide seating at bus stops and are prioritizing these installations at locations where bus time poles are in place. Positive, not fully green, but the tone of it is, is something that seems encouraging. The question becomes, while this is a citywide initiative, how much of it affects CB2? How much will we really see in Brooklyn? So that's what we need to stay um, in tune with and see how that plays out uh, when this finally said and done. The next item I see is um, more pedestrian safety and traffic calming design. For those who have been a part of the conversations around the redesign, of Atlantic Avenue. These are conversations that are taking place. And I think if you haven't seen, you'll hear more around that as well. I just use that as an example of an area within the district where 
this is being considered, but quite frankly, this is something that needs to be reviewed throughout all of the district. Agency's response is the agency requires additional information from the community board before making a funding decision. The community board should contact the agency with specific locations of concern. If we have high areas of traffic where we need to place priorities, I suggest we reconsider in the subsequent days um, before we submit this to make sure that those items are highlighted. Resident parking program pilot. Again, this is an item that has been discussed several times, at least in my tenure on the board uh, and the agency response. It generally stays consistent, but here's this year's response. This request includes more than one proposal. Agency agrees with this request and funding for part is recommended. The state law that created congestion pricing requires a parking study post implementation. We will work with the state to review the results once complete. Again, something that we need to keep on this item and continue to follow up on. Atlantic Avenue needs to be redesigned. I think some of that is already in place. I'm not sure how much we've given a true dedication to the pedestrian and the, the cycling of, uh, and, and just really the flow of traffic on Atlantic Avenue, but I know certain aspects are being considered now. Um, more to come on that, I know Crystal, Council Member Crystal Hudson is really leading the charge there. And again, the agency's response is, response is the agency requires additional information from the community board before making a funding decision. The community board should contact the agency with specific locations of concern. The next item is State Street needs to be redesigned. The response from the city agent agency is similar but it reads the agency requires additional information from the community board before making a funding decision. Community board should contact the agency with specific areas of concern on State Street for further review. Next item, more curbside charging stations. Uh, there are no public electric vehicle charging stations outside of a few plug-in charges at the Navy Yard. In Brooklyn Heights, the only charging stations on a public street are marked off for use only by the New York City Department of Emergency Management, which also has numerous charging stations in their private parking lot. The lack of charging stations create a distinctive, I'm sorry, disincentive for residents to acquire an electric vehicle as they would be forced to either drive to a different part of the city or pay for parking at expensive parking, private parking garages. The response from the agency reads, the agency agrees with this request. The funding cannot be determined at this time. For the study by the agency of this request is needed, we are currently conducting an on-street electric car charging pilot. We are looking to scale up installations beyond the pilot by 2025, but don't have a path forward yet. We are bringing on, we are bringing on board a consultant to study charges further, and I I forwarded the idea for a mobility scooter battery charging seating location to the unit handling the study for future study. So at least someone took the time to read this and came back with a specific response, something that's not generic, which is encouraging. Um, but again, that's a process that is probably still underway. We probably need to further monitor this to see how progress is made. At least if they have a date of 2025, we can see how progress is made from now to that point. Any questions from the community for the Department of Transportation items? This is John D. If I could just build on the a little charging. While we certainly have to do public charging stations, this is an area where the private industry also must be involved. The buildings that are being built that require parking, is there a requirement that there be the ability to charge electric cars in two or five years? What is the overall plan that the city has an idea to put in place that will accommodate the vehicles of the future? That's it. That's a lot, they're all great questions. We're not equipped with this time to give you a thorough response to those items, but I think as much as we can capture in your assessment, we'll give more detail 
and you help us put, you know, help get the city, or maybe when we get the representatives to come before the respective committees, give the right feedback to help answer those questions. With all great questions. Anyone else in the community has any questions? Hey, okay. um, by my account, the rest of the items that are listed um, either satisfy the request or are negatively impacted. So generally what you see as a red is generally what red indicates and it's just a hard no. I would encourage those who have the time to please read the remaining items um, in your spare time to be able to list, list what's, to understand what's listed there. Again, I can't, it bears repeating. While the community board takes an approach and we respond the way we do, it's not the only method of communication and advocacy. I encourage everyone, whether you're a board member or not, because we do something from a board perspective, doesn't prohibit you from individually as a citizen of New York to be able to communicate further. Please engage with your respective council members, the borough president. If you happen to see representatives from the different agencies, please communicate with them. We, we intend to, where we can, have more comments come to the community board so we can continue to drill down further. What you see here is an example of how the process works. So we're in January, and you know we're, we're, it's kind of a combination between what the mayor has, has presented in his budget, but then we, you know given that today is January, we're still within the month of January, we've given you an example, a sample of how we receive responses from the agency. Clearly, we have some more work to do, some items we need to tweak. For my other colleagues that are on the board, from the board that are on this evening's virtual meeting, they too will then go back to their respective committees, continue to have other comments, help refine the information that was provided. We then come together as a continued board, take a position and a stance, and then follow the rest of the cycle. And so it's not over. We still have opportunities to push a little bit further, provide clarity so that when there were responses that indicated that the agencies felt like items were grouped together, we have a chance to break them out. We have a chance to be proactive. Things that we may want in fiscal year 24, things that we want to advocate for in 25. So let's not take some of the generic responses or depending on how you view this, as not receiving satisfactory answers to think that the process is over. We have more that we can do to help get this accomplished or at least have it raised to the right agencies with the concern that is expressed already from you as members of the community. Uh, Mr. Dew, I see your hand up. Yes, uh, I just wanted to make a comment about the BQE cantilever, another project that was presented to the community board two decades ago. And only now after lots of angst has it begun to be fully addressed but is there a way to have DOT come to the community board and give a full analysis and report on what is happening with the BQE cantilever and what happens when the traffic is no longer able to freely flow over the cantilever? What happens to it? How are the overweight trucks redirected? At what point, what changes or or, or adjustments have to be made downtown Brooklyn to accommodate whatever traffic can no longer go on the BQE cantilever. How can we get a handle on what's happening with that entire project? It's going to be extremely expensive and complicated, but the community needs to know what's going on. All, all accurate points. What I can tell you, John, is that the community, you know, I've had several conversations with the DOT Brooklyn Commissioner, Commissioner Gray, Keith Gray. Commissioner Gray is more than happy to communicate and meet with community board. One caveat he has made is that it is in that, not in the best interest from his perspective to give little feedback, little tidbits from time to time. What they're looking to do is give a more comprehensive um, report. They have several things that they're still studying that are still underway. There's a BQE corridor uh, 
um, vision anticipated timeline that, that Tay is posting as we speak. And we are in constant engagement with DOT. We, we try to have them attend all of our meetings, particularly at the committee level. So if for nothing else, they get the feedback, they understand some of the concerns that we have. Quite honestly, I don't know that there is a solution that has been communicated about the trucks and some of the waiting systems that are required to help address those items. I think some of those things are still items that are being reviewed and studied. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I don't want to dare say confident, but I'm very optimistic that Commissioner Bray, who has always been a good partner, um, will continue to come back to us when we have significant information and then have an opportunity for the community and not only the community board, but collectively the entire community to be able to address those items. I also am not clear that at this moment, there is a solution about what to do when the traffic overflows to the local streets. I think, you know, clearly that is something that has constantly been raised and it's not, this has not been, it's consistently being raised and I don't know that we'll stop raising that until we get a, at least somewhat of a solution or an answer. But those are all points that you raise that we continue to address because it is important for us to know what that means. Um, Richard? Yes, uh, I, I wanted to go back to the um, charging stations. <clears throat> a report just came out from uh, UC Davis, January 2023, and it's called... Um, Achieving zero emissions with more mobility and less mining. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned that I think we have to start looking at the future now. It's not, not about us. It's about our children and our grandchildren. Uh, electric cars, we have to get away from our romance with owning cars. We just have to, you know, individuals, you know, it's better to put the money into public transportation if we're going to put it into 1,500 more charging stations so people can charge lithium batteries lithium is a, a rare scarce material that that takes incredible mining pollutes the water uh, on groundwater um uh, this report is just devastating in terms of how they see uh, uh the way our country is going and the way the world is going but particularly the united states i'll try to get it into the link you know how bad i am at doing that but i think it's something the community board should look at carefully and when we're considering electric plug in places, spend money that way, it might be, again, more beneficial to, to direct ourselves more towards the flooding at High Street Station. The money can go better there for uh, what they call a, a backup valves that these uh, they have these traps now that uh, stop flow, flow back, uh, stops water from flowing back. They may have to be installed in those in, at, the, at the station there. There are so many things that we need uh, we don't need to get more people in cars, whether they're electric or we need to we need we need more public transportation and better public transportation. Thank you, Richard. Um, I hope I don't tear up the first part of your name, but is, is that Vishnu ready? It, it is Vishnu. Close. Vishnu. Sorry, Vishnu. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to also add to Richard's point that we are a very non-car dependent re area. And so like there is minimal environmental gain to be had by putting like car infrastructure like charging stations, just because like even even if we take even if we assume that electric cars are better for the environment compared to their gasoline counterparts, like very few households here even drive. So like what's the point? Basically, yeah. Any other comments from the community? No, uh, Lenny, I did, I did get it into the chat. So if someone wants to read it, I suggest uh, that someone take a look, people look at it. And, and it's, it's an extensive and, and a brilliant report. Thank you, I see it. Any other members from the community? Barbara? Thank you, uh, Chair Singletary. I, I had a couple of questions. Um, where they say requests further study, is there some way we can um, press them into doing that further study? So that's something that we would continue to discuss at the committee levels um, and at the board level, because there would need to be perhaps an opportunity to word some of the items differently. In some cases, um, the request is, request is gonna be made, how do you get a study who's gonna pay for the study? 
So those are more intricate items that we would discuss outside of tonight's meeting to get more clarity as a board. And do you envision us asking each of these agencies as they impact our committees to come to our next meeting? So we would we always extend an invitation to the agencies to come, particularly after we go through this process. So we will do that. Um, there's no guarantee that they will come, but we will take right. them up and offer to request a, a visit or a, or a dialogue. And in some cases, it may not happen at the board level. Just want to manage everybody's expectation. It may happen in the district office in a conversation with myself. I'm a little surprised by their, the park's comment about the turf at South Oxford since they were at our meeting, I think, twice where that issue came up and um, representative from the park uh, presented as just how dire that situation is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Du? Uh, not about any specific item, but in regards to this process for last year and the last few years, is there an opportunity to understand how much progress has been made on requests made in previous years versus what we're talking about tonight? Um, we would have to. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some process for reconciliation to go back to the previous items and see which ones have been satisfied, as indicated with some of the items tonight that were highlighted in green. The reconciliation process to give you true metrics around progress. Um, I'm not sure how we would go about that. Um, but to, perhaps Tay, Tay and I can talk about that offline. And maybe when we get additional resources in the office, we might be able to do some kind of reconciliation to give an update, but at this moment, I'm not sure how how quickly we can satisfy that request. All right, well, listen, I want to thank everyone um, for helping us go through this exercise. For some of you, it may be the first time we've done it. For most of us, it's been some while, some time that we've done this, but I think it's important um, that the community understands the process. I wanna thank all of the board members who took the time to show up and thank you for allowing us to do something that we don't always get a chance to do is hear from the community. A lot of times they hear from us and we have to set aside a time, but tonight was a community meeting that we did a, did a great job of hearing from the community. And I wanna thank all of the community members who asked questions, all of the questions were spot on and, and relevant. And we hope to have additional information either through uh, direct communication with our committees or at the general board meeting. So I encourage all of you to continue to participate in this process. And as we get informa more information, we'll share it. If you have questions, please direct them, the questions directly to the board office or to the email. And we'll do our extremely, you know, we'll put a lot of effort and be extreme in trying to get back to you with a solid response. So with that, thank you everyone. Have a great evening. If you're not home, get home safe. We look forward to seeing you at our next meeting.